Hello and welcome to The Big Fight. So the big subject of this week was of course that incident that took place on the border with Myanmar uh, where the Indian Army went in, took out a, a couple of militant uh, uh, camps. It's still not quite clear how many casualties there were on the militant side but it was a, a really dramatic moment which led to a lot of excitement and a lot of euphoria. And then that had consequences which have then subsequently become rather controversial. Was there too much chest thumping and did that detract from some ex to some extent from the successes uh, that the army may have been able to achieve. And of course, on the Pakistani side, that started off an absolutely furious response and they're saying you better not take chances with us. So what exactly were the implications of all of this? Did the chest thumping take away from the success and what should happen with, with Pakistan? Some of the questions that we are going to be discussing and joining us here, uh, Subramaniam Swami, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, Shekhar Gupta, it's always a pleasure, sir, to have you with us. Um, MK uh, Bhadra Kumar is, is with us uh, as well, former Indian uh, diplomat. We have Lieutenant General Soni, uh, who's the former Director General of Military Intelligence and also a former Deputy Chief of, uh, of Army Staff. Um, RSN Singh is with us as well, who's been, well, strategic analyst, worked very closely with the Indian External Agency uh, in, in the past. Uh, thanks for being with us. Uh, Bina Lakshmi Nepram, it's always a pleasure to have with you. We'll try and also touch on what this actually says about the present state of affairs in the Northeast. And, and we're being joined uh, from Islamabad by Defense General Talat Masood, the uh, former Secretary of Defense Production in Pakistan. Thank you all so much for being with us. So why don't I get you first to tell us about the action itself. What do we know about it? And is this one of the most successful um, surgical strikes that the Indian Army has conducted? Whenever an action like this takes place, when the post-mortem takes place, uh, the facts become a casualty. But I, this doesn't distract from the fact that it was a beautiful operation, very well executed and coordinated, and carried out in a very, very, uh, what do you call, at a very short notice. So that, that uh, sort of a credit has to be given where it is due. But okay. I like to also put across one more point. You see, the political will which was displayed, a clear-cut task was given, and a very professional armed force went in where it was required to do, uh, go, carried out the task, came back, and didn't very much boast about it. It is one of the jobs the army the, does and underplays. The army didn't boast about I'm it, but there was a certain amount of boasting that took place. Can I just get your views on it before I come to the others? In terms of the speed of reaction and execution, there is no parallel in the past, I can tell you that much. The objective of this ambush was to sabotage Mr. Narendra Modi's visit to Bangladesh. Oh no. He was, he was not only the target, the target was Sheikh Hasina also. And who oh all God. were tapping, who all were tapping into this Even ambush? this site and the he ambush took place, yeah, no, two no, different no, no, directions. No, 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 no. Who, who oh was God. tapping into, it was not, it was not just NSCNK. NSCNK, okay. it, was, it was the ISI, it was the Chinese, there were any number oh of uh, ch Chinese, uh, they, they, they were local groups from Manipur, especially okay. People's so United, United Liberation point. Front. Oh my why, are you sounding, why are you sounding surprised about, about all that? Because uh, he went to Bangladesh and uh, Manipur is in one direction, Dhaka is in one direction. So you mean to say so there is no ISI hand in this, there is no Chinese hand? Oh my God. You see, it is not the first time, like 18 Jawans died. We condemn the brutality of this attack. On 9th, the operation started, assumed operation so started. What, you tell me what was the objective of these operations? Why it was done? For the last 60 years, you tell me the okay. objective of so, the of, so of, of, of counter-insurgency for 60 all years. All these 60 years coalesced into one particular day and no, they decided... No, it was not. That is exactly the product of your chest what? thumping that this is the most... I mean, oh my God, more than... 1,000 security forces have died in my home state, Manipur, since 1992. Did anyone care about them before? Why this time? Because the media said it was the highest casualty in 33 years. Combing operation has been going on for 60 years. I'm a product of a combing operation child. The day I was born, there was military combing operation. I survived. Okay. So for us, for us, this is the Jawans died. We must take care of our Jawans. This is not the way. Let the operations go on. Okay. Army has to do its job. I, I, okay. I, Army has I can't can understand. I, I, uh, besides okay, being emotive, I mean, in a emotive in an argument, I can't understand what, what, what is her case. Two points were made. One, that yes, a political will was displayed to, grow, to go across the border, although it's not very clear what happened. 
And then the flip side of that is that immediately after that, the chest thumping and the braggadocio that was on display almost eroded the gains that we have made. First of all, the chest thumping was done in the press and the media. I don't think the Prime Minister came and made any boastful claims. Nor no, did but Parikar. Ministers did. Ministers, huh? did. ministers did. Only one minister. I think he was under the influence of uh, Mr. Gupta. Oh, my <laughs> oh well, okay. I think but, I'm very flattered. Yes, you have to be flattered because you have an influence on some people. That some of the things he said, he ought to have said. For example, we did not get prior information of the Burmese because it was not necessary. You see, this is a, one of the best occasions when you could try this new policy because the Burmese were fed up with the uh, terrorists in their soil. They couldn't do anything about it. And uh, we, we had this problem, as uh, just pointed out. You don't out. need the prior consent. I mean, isn't that now, so you're saying that, that I mean, isn't that rather, uh, again, pushing well, the envelope a bit? You, see, you, don't you need can a send army into a neighboring you don't, country uh, without needing yes, prior yes, consent. Yes, yes, yes. If you have a country which is friendly to you and has expressed anguish at the... Uh, at the fact but then you that, can uh, consult them. It's not a problem. They well, mind uh, we they, we did tell them afterwards that uh, we had done this, yeah. and uh, they are, didn't we object. Are not friendly to us. How, how do you know they were not consulted? Okay, maybe they were consulted. No, no, That's no. no. <laughs> See, all these operations are only carried out when it is of mutual benefit. Uh, you, the Burmese uh, may not have minded that much. That That's that what they minded. They came out they, with they, a statement. Therefore, we had the that. The presence of the army. That's also you know anybody would mind it if you say, yeah, I sent my army into your country. No, no, no. But till now. The now, Indian listen, army hasn't uh, let me finish, showed uh, any dead uh, body of any insurgent. Okay. You know? Let me finish what I have to say. Uh, I'm saying that the, when our government was aware of the frequent exchanges between us and the Burmese, the Burmese expressing uh, despair at the fact that the terrorists are using their territory, some parts of the territory they didn't have control. The Americans, for example, when they did with Osama bin Laden, they said, we never consulted with Pakistan. We know that is not true. We just paid them. <laughs> did you or did you not give instructions to Raghavind Rathor as to what you should say? <laughs> Look, he's, he, he's, younger what he than, he's younger than me, but even if he was Under older, your influence, I, 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 I could... You I, taught him to shoot as well. But I, but I, wish, he, but I, don't, may, I, I don't have he, such he, a flattering view of did my Did you tell him to shoot with a gun or with his mouth? <laughs> Either well, way. Uh, <laughs> Look, or with his Twitter Look, fingers. in fact... Everything is a matter of record. When he said this, I was the first person to raise the flag on this. And I said, I know him to be a level-headed person. Why the, he why the hell has he done it? And I, because I think he just got excited. He's a yeah. well-meaning person. And frankly, blew it. Right? Uh, so, so I questioned him publicly. Uh, and then he replied to me, uh, giving a, uh, arguing with me. So I don't think uh, my influence, if it was there, worked. India and Burma have worked together in that territory right. for four decades. Yeah. Four decades. They've never made any song and dance about it. It's also a border that Bill Lakshmi can tell you more about, where both sides have tribal rights of transit and movement and trade. Till 20 kilometers. Till 20 kilometers. 20 kilometers, any in Indian population going to Burma, Burmese can go into India. In fact, if you go to Moray, you can cross, you can go to the adjoining Burmese village, have a meal and come back, it's perfectly legal and fine. So it's a very different kind of a border. Uh, right. When I first went to cover the Northeast in January of 1981, uh, there was a press conference that I've used that in my book and I've used okay. that story a hundred times. An army major was giving a briefing and he said, we've heard reports of a clash between, between BAs and UGs. BAs is Burmese army, UGs is undergrounds uh, in Burmese territory. And then he said, uh, 12 UGs died and 6 BAs died. And one of our senior most reporters said, Sir, this will page 7 ki story. You will not die. So you say that 30 BAs died and 15 sergeants died, UGs died. Then page 1 ki story is made. Everybody said, okay, go ahead with it. So this has been going on for a so, very long time. You know, there's lots of mythologies in that region because nobody okay. sees so, what happens there. So can I, can I just add a point? It, during 10 years of UPA, right? Did the UPA government ever made, make a chew about the bad treatment of Rohingyas in Burma? That's because, because there was such convergence of mutual security interest that okay. that issue was forgotten. Fair enough. Lieutenant General Talat Masood, whatever happened on the border between India and Myanmar, the repercussions were felt perhaps the most acutely in Pakistan. It's been 
like banner headlines and non-stop conversation in Pakistan and increasingly bellicose statements coming out from that. Not that anybody in India has actually said in the last couple of weeks that that's where the next strike is taking place, but that seems to be the assumption that a lot of people in Pakistan are making. No, I think uh, the irresponsible statement made by one of your junior ministers, uh, I, I think, and there, was a, uh, there were a series of statements being made which were very provocative. But actually, and, provocative uh, statements, just to be clear, there have been a lot coming from the other. Actually, after a couple of statements in the first few hours, most of the provocative statements have been coming from that side, not least by General Musharraf, who seems to have surfaced again, saying, I mean, you know, Chodiani Penny and <laughs> nuclear weapons and all sort of stuff. So, it seems to have touched a raw yeah, nerve yeah, in, pa in Pakistan also. Giving, yeah, uh, but you are giving a handle to all these people to sort of really take over. So this is exactly what you want and uh, this is uh, what we do not want that this should happen. If there was any point you wanted to raise, you should have raised it at the official level. But India is not even prepared to engage. Uh, politically. What sort of a policy is this? What sort of a neighborly policy is this that you are not even wanting to engage and you are giving public statements and public statements which are very belligerent uh, and obviously then uh, it uh, puts okay. everyone uh, on the back foot. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Badr Kumar first, let me get, you want to respond to what he just said? Unfortunately, I'm inclined to agree with what General Mas uh, Talat Masood said. You know, there have been statements here made in India which were completely unwarranted, unnecessary. You know, even if professionally it was a very neat job, hot pursuit, we could have even declassified information and talked a lot about it. But then to interpret it in uh, strategic terms, in geopolitical terms, as holding a message for other countries, I think it was completely unwarranted. Okay, you disagree with that? Yeah, absolutely. Look, this is an era of proxy war. What he is talking, we they were the first ones who initiated proxy war three decades back. People in the audience and otherwise cannot forget what was the thousand cuts for. Actually, we in India, we still don't know. We still don't know what constitutes war. And that is why we have been floundering for response. And this is why I, I rate this, uh, you know, action as, uh, as in, in very high esteem. Okay. Because of, so, so what I'm trying to say that you know all there is a lot of talk about you know why you know thumb, uh, thumping your chest and all that is also a part of nation building if something oh God, yes you, yes the people are very mate. happy with the decision making oh of, my of, of God. the political yeah. masters because oh my God. I, yes. you see when the political establishment takes a risk and he sort of allows such an operation you see they are taking a political risk because things can go horribly wrong you see what happens so is allow things them could, to do the chest no, thumping no, no, just let me finish this. If things would have gone wrong, then the responsibility would have gone on to the political establishment. So taking certain amount of credit, I think, is not uh, uncalled for. No, that is what I am trying to put across. Okay. If there are militant camps or terrorist camps that are being used, that's the point. That are on the on the on. Uh, we've heard these statements from Myanmar even afterwards. That if parts of our territory are being used by by terrorists or by militants by militants to set up camps to attack our neighboring country, that's wrong and action should be taken against them. That's the sort of a categorical statement we've never heard from Pakistan. That if they are terrorists or militants who are setting up camps inside Pakistani territory, those should be taken out. Now you may say the Indians shouldn't come in and take out those terrorist camps, but then the Pakistanis should say that we'll do it. But you never do. And if anything, you've been encouraging them, supporting them, funding them, you know, everything else getting bulletproof cars for the likes of Hafiz Saeed. I'm just saying yeah, conceptually, yeah. if you're saying that right-minding people should be saying the right you things. You know, conceptually, Pakistan, we India, good everyone should say that it's wrong to have terrorist training camps on our side. And I'm just asking, would you Absolutely. agree with that? It's wrong Absolutely. to have a terrorist training camp on your side, Absolutely. yes or no? Absolutely. You agree with that? There, is no two, uh, there can be no two answers to that. The point is that why have terrorists or whatever you call them, the point is that if you, there is terrorism being committed in Kashmir, then obviously there will be, you know, a reaction in Pakistan. If there is state terrorism being committed in uh, Kashmir, then there will but be a reaction. You always in have a justification. Then, You're back to the justification. No, no, ju uh. I'm not saying. No, I'm not saying justification. We are those who are against that. But what I'm trying to uh. say is that you people don't listen to our side of the story. You want to impose your will. Uh, on others. Because this is the I whole have... trouble. All right, Subramaniam Sami, when you were saying a short while back that whatever happened in Myanmar is a laboratory for what can happen, 
Is that a very clear allusion, as has come out from other people, that if tomorrow terrorist training camps are found in, yeah. in Pakistan, for example, and we yeah. know that they exist, yeah. then India should strike there. Now, obviously, the response from Pakistan was that it's a bit more complicated because yeah, you know, Pakistan right. does have nukes, and you may yeah, well end up in a different sort of the, I don't think this nu nuclear weapons has a, is of any consequence at all in this matter. Yeah. The issue is this, that the question in what happened in Burma is different from what is the situation in Pakistan. Pakistan, the civil society doesn't really exist there, doesn't count for anything. It's really the ISI and the military. They are backing all these militants. So if you're going to take a strike on that, there will be clearly a huge pressure on retaliation, which was not there in the case of Burma. There was no question of any retaliation, because Burma was, uh, shall I say, tacitly uh, sympathetic to us. So uh, therefore, to do it for Pakistan, if you ask me, should it be done, I would say, yes, we should prepare for that. But you have to do a lot of preparation, because the, uh, the kind of skill that would be required uh, would be so enormous that you have to prepare for it. We haven't done it so far. Okay. Uh, I would not like to discuss the operational plans of what I've actually no, I, Not the detail. plans, but the concept of it. No, but I'm just saying that one thing I want to put across here, that we have very clearly given a message that we shall not tolerate anyone to put the infiltrators or jihadis into our territory, and we'll react. Now, the point is, every time we talk like that, somehow the nukes start getting mm. flaunted from across the border which I think is a very infantile way of carrying out discussions. The point is, as to what we will do in the circumstances it happens in Pakistan, as was brought by Mr. Subramaniam, circumstances are different, the area is different, the power equation is different. So you see, basically to say that we will be able to replicate what we did in, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, Bangla in uh, Myanmar, yeah. would be slightly imprudent in my, my just, opinion. Uh, just yeah. take, take one minute. You see, this is exactly what we have to address. They feel that these nuclear weapons obviate a, con uh, a conventional conflict, and therefore this proxy war. So therefore, you have to find ways to deal with this proxy war. Where do you stand on all this, Shekhar? I think we have a lot of free time these days. Something has happened on the Burmese border. Something's happened not just with tacit understanding, but with yeah. complete complicity of the two governments. Understanding, complicities maybe is a neg negative word, right? Look at how careful India has been on the Aung San Suu Kyi issue all this while. It's a very delicate relationship in Pakistan. So it's not a lab, as he's saying, for something which you no, can no, do no. in Pakistan. It, it, it may be. It, 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 it may be, it, maybe not for Pakistan. It's a laboratory for doing it in Pakistan. Okay. It, it, I say it's a TV, uh, controlled experiment for us. But where else could you use this? No, well, that, that, no, no. In the case of Pakistan, you have to prepare. I told you that. You know. Okay. So don't but, put words but, in my but mouth. But to say okay. that I'm applying this to Pakistan, that almost sounds like saying, okay, see, if you Pakistanis were decent guys, that just as the Burmese let us do it, you also let us do it. And if you don't let us do it, you're indecent guys and you'll, you'll let the Americans do it. America and Pakistan are allies. So, Lieutenant General Masood, is yes. Pakistan also reading yeah. too much into something that happened in Myanmar? In, with with yes. India and the Indian and the Myanmarese government working yeah. together to take yeah. on insurgency, as, by the way, is the increasing trend across the world. India is yeah. working with Bangladesh to crush insurgents. India is working with, with Bhutan, Myanmar Bhutan, to do with it, Bhutan, with Bhutan, 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 with Nepal. Nepal. It's only Pakistan which right now the seems to have Bhutan, a policy. The king of Bhutan himself came and led the operations against Alpha right. bases in Bhutan. So, so it's only Pakistan, Lieutenant General Masood, which seems to be saying, no, it's perfectly OK to have terrorist camps and militant yes. camps, which is why perhaps the reaction well, has been the strongest well, in Pakistan not, uh, to say you yeah. shouldn't do anything to them. Well, I think you are completely coming with a, a wrong hypothesis because Pakistan is not saying it's perfectly all right to have terrorists. It's absolute nonsense. Uh, nobody's saying that. Pakistan is saying we are a responsible state. We want to cooperate with you. We want to sort of say that, you, you know, we would like to have a relationship. We want to engage in a dialogue. This is a responsible approach towards India, the Prime Minister of Pakistan is being highly restrained uh, in the response that he's making towards India's statements. It is your ministers in Syria that they are making such provocative statements. Okay, so and uh, then you are saying that you want to replicate Burma? What are you talking about? I don't think anyone uh, said Are you understanding okay, so, the so power? So let's just understand no, the, the power equation.
Yeah, I know the, the power, power equation. equation is so yes, yes, the power so equation is so different, and then Pakistanis will go <laughs> mad and wild. You're right. The equations can't be equated for two reasons. One, as we were just saying, in all the other countries, there is at least an agreement mm -hmm. that something should be done about militant camps right. and terrorist camps between India, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Myanmar, Nepal, Bhutan. There is an agreement. It is only Pakistan which does not seem to be acting against the terrorist camps that are there. And you are right in saying that if India comes inside and bombs those or blows them up, there will be a, a sharp reaction. Please, so I just am leaving, I'm leaving something to you to think about. What do you think, General Lieutenant General Masood, Pakistan should do about those camps? Yes. Because as you are seeing yes. repeatedly, well, I, I think the, the existence of well, those camps are now a clear are, and I, present I, danger and a threat to no, the long-term survival of Pakistan. I think it has policy for a long time. I think you are just trying to deliberately ignore the fact that Pakistan has changed its policy. Now the type of policy you are pursuing, you are in fact encouraging the militants and you are saying that the government of Pakistan was wrong in trying to sort of extend its hands of friendship because you are giving a full leverage okay. to the militant uh, and the jihadis which are there in Afghanistan, in Pakistan and in the world. Last question, so if therefore the evidence can be shown about the militant, the terrorist training camps that do exist in uh, either in, in Pakistan occupied Kashmir or Murid K in the areas where the Lashkar e Toiba is there. If all of that evidence is given, will Pakistan be willing to act against those camps? The evidence, if there is, you should give it to them, but you have to engage in a dialogue to be able to give it to them. If you don't want to have a dialogue, then yeah. why do you say that you want to have a good relationship with Pakistan? Pakistan then uh, you okay. will continue to have an adversarial relationship and you will continue to talk the way that you are talking today and we are talking to you today. So, I mean, if that is the future, then God help both of us.